but I'm very pleased that Ms. Paulius has accepted to be to be the new commissioner for this. She's actually on a one-year contract, and we need to have uh, in the force. There was literally no succession planning. We have a core of young officers, young officers who are very capable, but we needed some time so that they could get the necessary training, they could get the required training and the experience. So Miss Polius is there for one year, so she so there can be a smooth transition into new leadership in the in the force. So she's there for one year, and after this year, the force is going to be on the new younger leadership. But we need, Mr. Philip that did a sterling job as acting commissioner of police. Mr. Philip was responsible. I, I noticed you, you no longer complain about passports again. That's happening. That that is happening at, at, at a much at a much quicker pace. You may know that we're going to be moving into new into a new building for for the passport office. That 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 is happening. So you know you you you'll also know that during the the, the suppression of crime act, Mr. Philip was the one responsible for the majority of of of, of ensuring that that act came into being. Something what? you must remember: the the training vote was zero. We we seem to have forgotten that that the training vote for the police force was zero, nothing, not a cent. You also know that maintenance for police stations, the, the police stations were maintained by dinners and lunches. You also know that the view for the, the, the view for police station, the roof was in a complete mess. If that roof had been fixed, it, it would have cost three hundred thousand dollars. We have to spend nearly three million. You also know that the grocery police station was in a complete mess. Complete, and there were plans already in 2016 to construct new Grosse Police, head, new Grosse Police headquarters. That was bad. You understand? You'll also know that we have bought nearly 30 vehicles in the last two years. You also know that right now we are recruiting more than 70 new police officers. You understand? So it, it's a work in progress. The, the problem of crime and crime suppression in St. Lucia did not start in July 26. It didn't start that. It's been a recurring problem. So it's a recurring problem. But what I will never see, and no matter how you prompt me to say it, I will not say this person can't, but I can. I don't know if you, if you recall these words, Kenny can't, but I can. I will never say that. I think the former prime minister tried. As all prime ministers, no prime minister wants a country with crime. No prime minister. And I will say that he tried. Of course he tried. Kenny Anthony tried. Every prime minister. Why should a prime minister want crime in this country? Let's be logical about it. Why should a prime minister want to administer a country where there is rampant crime? But what I will never see is that Shastri could not, but I can. I'll never say that. What I will say, I'll give the police the resources, we'll put the policies in place, we'll try the best to give them the resources that they need to help in the fight against crime. I don't know what the, I don't know the recommendations, you know, honestly. I read it and I didn't see the recommendations. I saw statements. I didn't see recommendations. I didn't see that let's do this and that will happen. I saw state, I saw bland statements. Like statements, statements. In the opposition, I'll tell you something. The opposition ridicules me when I ask to come and speak. When I say let us stand, let us sit together to work on it, they ridicule me. They try to. I mean, I, I can't be ridiculed, but they ridicule me. You see, I'll tell you something. I have to be so careful what I say. Do you know I can't say the word tall or short? I can't say these words. I mean, this is this this is really rough on me. I cannot say it all. I can't say it. If I say it, it's a whole story. I mean, this is I mean, this is so unfair. But I will never tell any of you. I will never tell that you're against me or you don't support me. Or the, I'll invite the entire public to listen to all the press. 
I will never see that I will never single out any of you to tell people don't listen to you or for I'll never do that. I'm a, I am from a whole era of free press. I'm from an era where people I lived the time, you see, you young journalists, I lived the time when radio stations were closed. It wasn't the Labour Party. I've I have lived a time when radio stations were closed by governments. You know, the history, you know, there are some people in St. Lucia who know the history very well, you know, but they very conveniently forget it and use it at some point when they want to, you, you, you understand? I will never make these statements. I will never tell you that a level the public don't listen to you. I let the public judge for themselves what they must listen to. When, when, when the UDIP wants to make recommendations to me, they'll make them in the proper way. They'll make them with a view for discussion. I have asked, in fact, when I call for support, I'm ridiculed. So the UDIP suggestions suggest are not in good faith. My opinion is that the UWP wants a country to be in chaos. My opinion is that the UDIP wishes bad. I believe that every morning when the UDIP wake up, they want something wrong to happen to St. Lucia. That's my belief. Because you can't have a country <clears throat> when an opposition party is actually glorifying crime, actually hoping that there are 100 murders in the country, actually hoping and praying for it, actually looking to say that killing St. Vincent is because of St. Lucia. Highly irresponsible. The United Locust Party, what they are trying to do, they are trying to create chaos, disorder, disunity, confusion in this country because they have lost elections. The government will remain focused. The government will, the government will do what we have to do. We're going to be focused. And again, I'm making the plea. I'm asking everyone, churches, civil society, let us get together to deal with the crime problems in this country. Let's get together. But I, am, I, I, am, I don't believe that an opposition party should deliberately spread chaos and misinformation only because they believe it will assist in the quest for power. The people of Solution have taken a decision, and this government is going to be a government for everyone. Everyone. We've just spent nearly $8 million in education support for the students of this country. We've given every child a laptop, every child, in spite of political affiliation, got to go to the laptop. The opposition parliamentarians were given educational support for their constituencies, and they were given stimulus support. The, I was in opposition for six years. I never got any support. This government is doing it for everyone. So the opposition politicians, they got support to buy things for school, and they also got duty-free concessions. The opposition, so that they, they could import school supplies for the constituents. So we believe that this country belongs to all of us. We believe this country can't be divided by selfish political motives. And whilst we are in government, we're going to be focused on developing this country for the benefit of all. This morning, school has reopened. 26,000 students are going to school. These students, we wish them the best. The government is making all in its power. The teachers, every teacher was given $600 more as material allowance. Every teacher. The teachers who were, who were temporary, they will be getting paid in September. We've increased it from $800 to $1,400. We never said we give it to some teachers. Every teacher got it. We increased it. It's something that we initiated by the Labour Party when we were in government. We've increased it this year. Every teacher. Schools, schools, we understand that there is need 
for general repairs in all the schools within our within our fiscal constraints we've tried to repair as many as possible but that is work in progress in fact i am seeking some funding so that we can do major repairs in the schools that need it we understand that the conditions in the schools are not perfect and I'm thanking the, the, the teachers and the students for bearing the first. But there must be some responsibility. We can't continue to vandalize school furniture. We can't continue to, to, to vandalize the, 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 the school equipment. But, I'm, but I, I, I'm, I can assure you that we are trying our best. We are trying our best to ensure that schools are repaired. But it's holistic. Every child got $500 when they pass. The, to go into secondary school. Every child. Every child got a laptop computer. Every teacher got the increase in their material allowances. And every school, regardless of the constituency, in terms of priority, there was repairs in every school. The government has a policy that will try to get every household to have one student going to a university. Because I'm sure... <coughs> You know about students who are very capable, but because their parents could not afford it, because their parents or they could not get a scholarship because the limited limited number of scholarships, they could not go to university. We have something called the first generation scholarships. Houses of where children, neither their parents or their grandparents ever went to a, a to a, 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 a university. They will be going now. We will try to get them now. We've done a hundred of them. Don't get me wrong. Everyone can't get it at one time, but it's a work in progress. We also have never before asked so many solutions going out to study at university. And further, we have a grant program which is going to be administered by, by a separate board to give financial support to students to get university education. Not everybody. Everybody can't get it one time. Everybody never got it one time. And further, for those students who are not, it's a word I don't like to use, academically qualified, I don't like to use that word at all, they're going to, they, we, are, we are expanding TVET, technical vocation and, ed, and, and education, so these students can get, can learn skills that they want to learn. So many things are happening in education. Many things are happening. So I just hope that the students make use of the opportunities that are available to them. And I want to thank the teachers for their dedication to the cause of educating the people of this country. The youth economy is a success story that everyone, everyone seems to have forgotten. This is the first government. I don't know if you recall when we spoke about the youth economy. Remember what the opposition was saying? Do you remember? What the, and then again, you can quote it. These are quotes. When we decided we're going to become, the UFI community now has doled out a million dollars in grants, not even loans as yet. And the Caribbean Development Bank has injected, will inject, in the process of injecting, over $14 million, $16 million of loans and grants into the youth economy. And absolutely no politics. In fact, I get criticized for not being more involved in the youth economy. An idea, I just let, 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 let people handle absolutely no politics. You saw who got the grants. I never knew that, nor will I ever oppose it. Because I believe that there are certain things where the people of the country must benefit. Sports, education, economic empowerment can have no political colors. I was asking about, um, you know, I mentioned Catrice East, and I think over the weekend you're supposed to have the um, your 15th annual academic um, honoring ceremony. Um, That's great. Um, so what was, I guess, what were the outcomes of that? Um, how do you feel, uh, I mean, for the 15th time? I invited you, I thought you to come, but you, 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 you didn't come. I, I expected you know, I expected the press to, to attend. I mean, I invited the press. You, it, was, it, 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 it was wonderful. Six young people. Um, they, they, they answered, they, they were free rounds of questions. It's the 15th time I've done that. The prices, 
were um, the prices were a laptop computer for the for the student who wins, and a, a, and a monetary prize, and a bag full of school supplies, and every child who topped their class in the common entrance examination, it, 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 I think there's a new word for it now, they got a, they got school supplies and they also got a tablet. So the prices were, were good. And then there was a motivational speaker, some young lawyer, a, a young lawyer, and his name is Peter Marshall, spoke to the people and then it was very, 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 very interesting. The young people enjoyed themselves. Again, there is absolutely no political color. The students are not chosen by me. They're chosen by the school. And you see the difference between me. I will never go on Facebook. And you, you, you know in my constituency, I gave out tons of exercise books and school bags. And, but I, I wouldn't... Okay, I, that, that, that will not be on Facebook. I've done that for so many years. And the people of St. Lucia understand that. The people of my constituency understand that. So they, they know that their parliamentary rep will never go on Facebook and see what he did for them. They, they, they reward me by giving me 2,000 votes majority and things. That's how, they, <laughs> that's how they reward me. So I don't have to do these kind of things. Sometimes I laugh. Because when people accuse me of things, I tell them, play the tip. Like the $1,500 they accused me of saying, no one can produce a tape to say why I said so. <laughs> you know, like when they say I'm against investment, nobody can ever hear Philip Joseph Pierre in any platform, political platform, parliament, or any speech ever criticize foreign investment. Never. The most investment in this country came when I was Minister of Investment under the Kenyan Antony government. There is no one who can produce any tip that can ever see I ever criticize foreign investment or I ever made any racial statement. No one. The only statement I make is myself. I say what I look like and I say who I am. So all this, produce a tip. Produce it. I can produce tips. I can produce tips of medicants and barking dogs. I can produce these tapes. I can produce them. I can produce these tapes of massa. I can produce these tapes. But produce mine. Bring challenge. Anything I am accused of. Bring the tapes that say what they say I said. I have never, I have said to the whole world, that I was born with a disability. You know that. I said to the whole world. I said to the whole world. I said to the whole world that I stutter. I said to the whole world, I'm, I'm not ashamed of that. I have nothing to be ashamed of. God has been good to me. And the people of Cassius East have been good to me. And the people of the Labour Party have been good to me. So I'm not, I have nothing to be ashamed of. They are dividing the country by, by misinformation, by going abroad with misinformation, by saying things that are completely not true, by trying their best to stop the good name of St. Lucia, by trying their best to make investors get disinterested in this country, and I am putting it, and if you look at the utterances, I make no apologies for it. If you look at the utterances, if you look at what they say at their town hall meetings, you will see a straight division, divisiveness, all because they want to halt the progress of this country. And I make no apologies for saying that. I understand criticism. I have been involved in opposition politics. I know opposition politicians want to get back into government. But you get back into government by a process. You get back in government by giving ideas, not by blatant lies and, and, and things that are obviously not true, no proof. And what they do, they move from one lie to another. 
So they say something, <clears throat> it wasn't true, they drop it. I'll tell you something. Look at the accusations that the opposition has made on this government. And that has, have you heard them ever come back and say that's, that, that's not true? Just say a lie, drop it. Say a, a, give some misinformation and drop it. And, and the sad thing is that people do not want the government to defend itself. People get annoyed when the government defends itself. We can't allow people to just say things that are obviously not accurate and can be proven not to be accurate. They're not true. I'm not just saying, and, and I ask, bring the proof. But what the opposition does is that they try to spread discontent, they try to spread disunity, all because they want to halt the progress of the, of the people of this country, because they've lost elections. I understand criticism. I, I was in opposition. I understand it. And I welcome criticism. But do it not with, 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 with things that are obviously misinformation. So I stand by, 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 by my statement and I make no apologies for it. I think the opposition is trying to destroy St. Lucia because they've lost elections. And I make no apologies for it. And then I'm not seeing all the members, I'm not seeing all the UDAP supporters, I'm seeing the leadership of the United States Party, the leadership. Because I'm sure that there are UDAP supporters who want to see the Lucia progress, but the leadership of the United States Party, they are the ones who are, who are trying to create mayhem and destruction in this country because they've lost elections. And I make no apologies for saying that. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you. Sure.